Hi guys! Maybe dipping strawberries is easy for you, but piping on them, not so much. So today I'm showing you everything you need to know about how to get it right and pipe your favorite designs with chocolate so you can become a chocolate artist. It's really all about consistency. We're covering so many different techniques to create these fake strawberries that have been trending and other popular designs like the classic loop, Baby Yoda, a cheeseburger just in time for Father's Day, and SpongeBob theme. Custom strawberries are highly requested for small treat businesses, wow. and offering this type of work is something that will really make your sweets stand out. So let's create something magical! To create clean and precise designs, the chocolate that you pipe with really makes a difference since all brands are slightly different in composition, making them each work better for different things. To achieve that perfect piping formula, you will need the Sweet Tooth Fairy brand chocolate melts and Easy Thins or Paramount Crystals as the thinning agent to adjust the consistency. We're using three different piping consistencies in this video, which we'll get to in a moment. The reason I don't recommend Merkin's brand for piping is that it doesn't work well at higher temperatures and tends to separate easier when combined with any thinning agent. However, the Sweet Tooth Fairy is extremely stable, can withstand heating at higher temperatures so that it stays fluid for longer in the piping bag and hardens really nicely for all the pipe details. Before we get started with the piping, I'm dipping all my strawberries into the chocolate. These were all dipped in Sweet Tooth fairy as well, but if you prefer dipping in another brand, feel free to use your go-to favorite for your canvas as long as you let the Sweet Tooth Fairy do all the magic for the piping. After shaking off the excess, I sand them upright to dry in floral foam to prevent that flat back. It really steps up the game in the presentation of your berries, especially when you're decorating them with your designs. The first consistency I'm going to show you is the stiff consistency. A perfect example of this is the loop design here. The basic formula is to measure 2 ounces of whatever color of Sweet Tooth Fairy you want to use, but since this is a stiffer consistency, we're not adding any easy thins to this at all. Just straight up Sweet Tooth Fairy, then pop it in the microwave and heat this in 30 second intervals. Since the chocolate needs to stay fluid for longer in the piping bag, you're able to melt this in higher intervals. This is much different than the standard melting method for dipping consistency. For that, the chocolate should be melted in much shorter intervals to prevent overheating. This usually isn't melted enough after the first round, so feel free to melt for another second round of 30 seconds and stir after completing the two rounds. You'll notice the chocolate is similar to the consistency of an icing, which makes perfect sense as to why this works so well for piping lines, loops, bead borders, and any type of outline. After it's well mixed, it should plop right off the spoon, and the temperature should be between 100 to 110 degrees before loading into your piping bag. My absolute favorite bags are these textured decorating bags that come with bag ties. The bags are super lightweight, so you're able to feel how the chocolate what is flowing and they're even more comfortable to work with compared to a sandwich bag. I find you have more control of the pressure and they are less awkward to hold. I will link the bags down in the description box below. The ties come with the bags and keep the pressure nice and tight rather than twisting the bag closed the whole time. The key here is to snip off the tiniest corner from the bag. When you practice, the result should be a pen-like design. If the bag feels too warm and the chocolate flow is too runny, feel free to wait a few minutes and try again. The second consistency is the medium consistency that works great for making seeds and many other designs in between. Just like before, you'll need the 2 ounces of Sweet Tooth Fairy, except I'm adding half a tablespoon of Easy Thin or Paramount Crystals in there. It is best to do this at the same time when they're both unmelted. Then go ahead and melt with that same method for 2 rounds of 30 second intervals. 
for you to better understand why Merkins isn't ideal for piping is because it should not be heated above 90 degrees or there will be white spots in your chocolate, so it would need too much thinning agent to pipe at a lower temperature. With this sweet tooth berry, it can be heated above 100 without having any white spots in your design. Be sure to thoroughly mix until the easy thins are completely dissolved and everything is melted. The idea is that the temperature should be around 100 so that it doesn't drip or ruin your design and it will be loose enough to flow a little more than the stiffer consistency but firm enough to hold the shape of a small seed or dot. Depending on what you prefer, the middle consistency is also often interchangeable with the loose consistency, which I'm demonstrating now to fill in Patrick's eyeball. Since they can both be piped for many of the same details, I'll compare both of them for you to decide which you are most comfortable with. To 2 ounces of Sweet Tooth Fairy, drop in 1 tablespoon of Easy Thins, microwaving for 2 rounds of 30 second intervals. Being that this batch has the most Easy Thins, it melts together super nicely when giving it a mix mix mix. If you have ever decorated sugar cookies before, it's similar to a flood consistency icing. My chocolate here was a bit warm, so I recommend to wait a few seconds and pipe at 100 degrees so that it's easier to control. Now to compare, the green is the loose and the pink is the medium. If you don't work fast enough, filling in the medium can leave some bumps on the surface. The loose is more smooth, but if it's hard for you to control the looser chocolate in the beginning, with practice you can decide which one you prefer to use for your specific needs. One of the most common mistakes is piping a super defined design like a loop with a loose consistency. It comes out way too thick and when piped on something irregular like a strawberry, it will drip down. To do this properly, take this stiff consistency chocolate and turn side to side as you pipe. This is one of the two ways to pipe on a strawberry. The hint is whichever side you are piping, that side should be turning in the direction towards you as you twist the strawberry with one hand and pipe with the other. It is much easier to do this design on a flatter berry instead of one that slopes down. The other way to pipe is to use a finger rest. The index finger from the opposite hand is guiding and stabilizing the tip, holding it slightly above the strawberry as it's laying down, allowing the chocolate to fall from the tip. This is great for beginners to get familiar with how the bag works. Although this method is easier, the downside is that you can't use it for everything, especially the designs that require you to turn the strawberry as you pipe. It's hard to explain, but you'll definitely understand what I mean once you play around with it and give it a try. As for reheating the chocolate, it stays fluid in the bag for a while, but once you feel it's not flowing anymore, pop it in the microwave for 3-5 to five seconds and test it out on a paper plate or parchment paper before piping on your berry. Now that we have the basics down, the fun part is working on all the designs. If you don't like the idea of freehanding, it helps to sketch them out first. This is my strawberry journal where I plan how they're going to look. First are these fake strawberries that so many people wonder how you make them. Practice piping a curly zigzag with the stiff consistency chocolate and check that the tip is not clogged by removing any hard chocolate that collects in the tip. I'm turning the strawberry slowly as I pipe my zigzag all the way around. You can make the curves on the zigzags as tight or wide as you like. After completing each berry, make sure to check that the tip is not clogged. Now that we've finished the pretty outlines, the trick for a seamless look is to fill in the bottom with a very fluid, dipping consistency chocolate that is looser than normal. This is at no higher than 90 degrees because Merkins is what I prefer for this part and I put that into a plastic squeeze bottle with the berry turned to the side, squeeze to fill in the curves of the zigzag working as quickly as possible, then immediately dip into a deep deli container like the berry is taking a dip into to the pool and gently shake off the excess. Doing this trick achieves a smooth and seamless result as long as you work quickly and the chocolate has been thinned out enough. When filling in, what you don't want to do is tilt the berry too much or turn the berry upside down or the chocolate can drip outside the outline since it's very loose. 
Also, if you were to do this with a piping bag, it would take a while to fill in and won't be nearly as seamless. To ensure the coating completely covers the whole section, twirl the berry and tip in every direction without going above the outline. For the seeds, I'm piping with the medium consistency by forming a small ball and dragging it out at the end while easing off the pressure. Be sure to cut your tip very small on the bag for this and finish it off with a drizzle. These berries definitely remind me of my strawberry pillow. A simple yet classic design is the Baby Yoda Berry. Dip the bottom half of a light green berry into a nude colored chocolate to look like his Star Wars robe. Then to dress him up, pipe two vertical lines down the center with the stiff consistency chocolate. Directly above that, I'm making a delicate bead border with the stiff consistency as well. For the beads, build up a ball and drag the end, then overlap over the ends by covering with another bead. Feel free to pause occasionally and check that your tip is not clogged, then continue by slightly turning the berry a little at a time to cover the edge. For his eyes, I piped pea-sized circles with medium consistency. Remember to make them big enough since we are adding the little dots inside and press any chocolate that is sticking up with a toothpick. The tip of this should be very tiny. All you need to do is press, barely squeezing down just like a pen. If you prefer the dots to be bigger and fuller, they tend to pop out more and be more 3D, just like this. I shaped his arched brows with a green stiff consistency and a small dot for his nose. My favorite way to make his ears are with a silicone unicorn mold. I fill the mold with green chocolate and carefully pop them out. Then fill the middle with a loose consistency pink chocolate and you have your Yoda ears without having to make them yourself. Secure them on with a small amount of stiff chocolate angled diagonal from his eyes, holding them down for a few seconds before letting go. Being careful not to bend the ears or the chocolate will break. The Krabby Patty is a lot easier than it looks if you sketch it out. The color of the bun is a nude colored chocolate and a wider shorter berry is the most realistic for the cheeseburger shape. Split the berry in half with the horizontal line using stiff consistency brown chocolate and start filling in a few rows by poking the tip around as you squeeze into a zigzag motion. This achieves the textured effect of the patty. It helps using a lighter pressure when squeezing to hold the shape of the texture as much as possible. I don't make a line across the bottom to keep the irregular edges of the patty. Now for the cheese layer, this was a medium consistency. I'm piping a zigzag as I turn to cover edge to edge the whole patty, then quickly filling in a triangle shape to ensure the cheese looks smooth. The ketchup doesn't need to be a pin straight line, it can have a little bit of squiggle to it. Instead of letting the chocolate fall from the tip, pipe it flat to give it more texture and add another row on top. We can't have a Krabby Patty without the lettuce. With a stiff consistency green chocolate, pipe a tight, short zigzag with quick up and down motions, then top the bun off with some sesame seeds. Just like the seeds on the fake strawberry, this is medium consistency, but I made these seeds a little bigger. Medium consistency is perfect enough to hold a natural shape without looking too loose or too pointy. SpongeBob is coming down to the Krusty Krab. Pipe two small circles super close together to give the illusion that one is overlapping the other for cartoon inspired eyes and make a cluster of three lines for his lashes along with a bean shaped nose extending off the eyes all done with stiff consistency. The most important thing is to work with a super tiny tip especially with black chocolate it can appear slightly thicker and you want all the fine clean details to look sharp. Excuse all the shaking, not sure why Spongebob made me a little nervous. 
After his face outlines are done, I pipe a square border with a zigzag pattern to close it up. Doing this last ensures there's enough room for everything you need to fit, and adds small dots for his spongy self. When filling in the eyes, you can either choose medium or loose consistency like I mentioned earlier. It's all about what works best for you, and all you need for his teeth is a small press like you're making a dot to fill that small area in. Our friend is definitely coming to life. Dab a dot of blue chocolate in either medium or loose consistency and make a stiff red curve with three freckles on his cheek. Again, your tip should be cut very small for this. Before Spongebob heads to Bikini Bottom, we need to build his pineapple under the sea. The berry you use can be a medium size for this, dipped into a medium orange colored chocolate similar to a tangerine. The best way to make the lines on your pineapple is to slowly turn as you pipe on a diagonal. Start completely from around the berry, not just the front. Keep piping lines going upwards until you make your last one on the tip. Then begin to cross the other lines in a downwards diagonal for a crisscross pattern. This is similar to piping an ice cream cone design. As you can see, I'm turning the toothpick as I angle the line using the stiff consistency with an ultra small tip. All we're missing are the door and windows. Pipe a curved outline for Spongebob's front door and two circle windows. From the actual inspo pick, they were arranged diagonally to each other. It is time to fill them in with your middle or loose consistency. I love the color of this blue chocolate to match Spongebob's eyes. Another common color I've seen before is gray. The last part is completely optional. You can leave the door smooth just how it is, but I wanted to give it a wooden effect. After the chocolate has completely set, begin by gently carving out some lines with the toothpick, just enough to etch the surface but not break the coating. We can't forget Patrick. SpongeBob sidekick Patrick Star. He is one of the easiest character berries to start off with. If you're just getting started with piping, have a pink strawberry turned upside down and pipe two oval eyes, slanted brows with his curved smile. Then go ahead and fill in the eye outlines with medium or loose consistency white chocolate. Last, bring him to life with black pupils in the center of his eyes. This fashionable Patrick Berry was the most challenging, not because of the design, but you need to remove the stem from the berry and dip the bottom half into green chocolate. He was so slippery with gloves on, so I had to skip them for this, and tried my best to avoid squeezing too hard so that the shell didn't crack. I placed Patrick into a small cupcake liner and gripped him from the top and underneath to pipe the purple flowers on his shorts. Be sure to tilt your hand as needed to angle the flowers on the side and keep him stable. The flowers can either be filled in smooth or textured. I wanted them to look like fabric so I zigzagged them in with a stiff consistency chocolate. The finishing touches are his belt, made by piping a line around the top of the shorts, turning the berry as you go along, and a pink dot for his belly button. Last but not least is Spongebob's outfit. This berry is not only double dipped, it's triple dipped into the white and dark brown, so I suggest that your chocolate is super thinned out for this striped effect to prevent the layers from having a thick result. In the center, start with his red tie. It's similar to an arrow if that helps. I outlined and filled that in with the stiff consistency. Then where the brown pants are, pipe some stitches on each side with the tie as your guide to make the pattern symmetrical. Complete his outfit with two downward triangles on both sides of his tie for his collar. 
I hope you guys enjoyed all the tips and tricks from this video and you learned something new. Give this video a thumbs up if you did. When you have such a pretty canvas available, it is put to great use when piped with creative decorations. It's Christina here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.